What's going on smart people? A couple months ago I made some predictions on what I felt was going to be the easiest, most challenging, and most enjoyable class out of the three that I'm taking this semester for my first semester of grad school. And now that a couple months has gone by, I figured it's a good time to revisit that and see how my predictions went. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link in the description so that you can watch it. I am about to spoil it right now anyways, but if you'd like to hear more about my reasoning, you know, feel free to watch it. Watch it twice if you want. Increase my average watch time. In that video, I hypothecated that math methods would be the most enjoyable, that quantum mechanics would be the easiest, and that classical mechanics would be the most challenging. And now, two months later, or however long it's been, four years, I have no idea, things have changed. Now what I say from this point on, take with a grain of salt, because frankly, they all turned out to be hard as shit. I mean, they're all winners here. So this is going to be a battle of the margins, a battle of splitting hairs. But without a doubt, quantum mechanics has turned out to be the hardest for me. Who would have thought a graduate level course in quantum physics would be challenging? Everyone but me, apparently. Uh, we just spend so much more time going over much more abstract concepts than I did in undergrad, like in I don't know, deriving the uh, time evolution operator. And the homeworks just take me so long because there's a trick. There's a trick to every single problem, and if you don't know the trick, you're beating your head against the wall for hours, or at least I do. And my professor for this class, he's, he's a borderline genius. It's like, you wouldn't know how to explain the thought process behind breathing because it's just second nature to you. Like, it's something that you do automatically, you understand it automatically. That's graduate level quantum mechanics for this guy. Everything is just so trivial to him. But what I like about him, he kind of assumes it is for you as well, but he asks. He's like, this is, you guys all know this, right? And we're, we're all like, no, hell no. But, but uh, you know, he, he at least asks and then he takes a couple steps back and he explains more. And what kind of blows my mind about this class is that we've been in it for two months now and we got to the Schrodinger equation like less than a week ago because we've just been going through every nook and cranny of the theory of quantum mechanics along the way. So this has been the most challenging course for me so far, and this is the it's most noticeably the more challenging one out of the three. But having said that, it's also my favorite. I'm really liking the amount of rigor in this class. I think it's a class that deserves it. Um, the homeworks are a pain in the ass but I kind of like it. They're good questions. This class just seems more honest. You know, sometimes you don't have pure states and sometimes you have to orthogonalize vectors yourself. So things that you might have touched on in undergrad like Gram-Schmidt or density matrices uh, just seem more heavily featured in this class. So I really like it. Okay, so that is the hardest class and also the one that is most enjoyable, which means that the only one is left is the one that is the easiest. So we'll just, we'll just apply a ladder operator, a lowering operator to difficulty and meet in the middle here for the one that's not the hardest and not the easiest, which is math methods. Math methods is right in the middle. The thing that makes math methods challenging for me is not the lecture. Our professor is one of the best explainers I've ever had. He is the Feynman of physics. Well, I guess Feynman was the Feynman of physics. He's, he's like Feynman, he's just got a way with explaining things. It makes lectures super enjoyable. What makes the course really hard are the homework assignments because I'll have this way that I think will get me to a solution and the homework style is more so, no, do it this way. And I'm like, I don't want it. <laughs> So for example, one question might be like, find the normalization constant for the Legendre polynomials. And me, I'm like, word, Rodriguez formula to the rescue. Coincidentally, the way to do that is also in the math methods book, but the problem itself will be like, but you have to do it by squaring the generating function of the Legendre polynomials, integrating it, and then doing a Taylor series expansion and comparing coefficients. So it's like, man. <laughs> So this class is not particularly easy for me because, you know, when we get our homeworks, there's an easy way and a hard way to do a problem, and it seems like we're always forced to go the hard way, but it's worth it because more often than not, when we're forced to go the hard way, I would have had no idea that that method would have also led to the solution. In the video where I made my predictions, I did say that I thought that this class would be the most enjoyable, and it still is really enjoyable. I'm actually learning new things. Believe it or not, this might come as a surprise to you, but I never formally learned residue theorem or how to do contour integration, which is what we're covering right now, which is really cool. And then the next section, we'll be going over tensors, which I'm really looking forward to. As you know, I'm a tensor boy, so that'll be fun. So this class still is really fun. Uh, it's just more challenging than I thought it would be. But that leaves the easiest class, which really surprised me, or quote unquote easiest class, is classical mechanics. 
What's kind of funny about this class is we end up going farther in a concept than I would have in undergrad, but when we first start the concept, it's presented as if no one has any idea of what it's like, because like today, so we're going over Euler angles and infinitesimal rotations, and today our professor introduced the levi civita tensor as if no one already knew it. And in my head I'm like, I can't imagine a physics student going through their bachelors and not coming across the levi civita symbol. But I mean, who am I to talk? Because maybe you could say the same thing about me not knowing how to do contour integrals, so. But what I like about the lectures is they're pretty much straight from the Goldstein Classical Mechanics textbook, but in the textbook, whenever it says, you know, it follows that or it's easy to see, he actually goes through the intermediate steps in the lectures, which is pretty helpful for me. Uh, and also the homeworks are just super fair because the way that those are structured is a lot of them are straight from the Goldstein textbook, uh, but some of them are ones that he comes up with, so, you know, so it's a nice little division there of this is how one person asks classical mechanics questions, this is how I ask classical mechanics questions, so it's a nice, it represents both sides, I guess. Don't get me wrong, though, this class is still really hard, it's still complicated systems, and, you know, you can make it as arbitrarily difficult as you want for classical mechanics, but this section isn't going too bad for me. It's actually going pretty, pretty smoothly because it's been a lot of linear algebra, which is the math that I think I'm best at, so uh, soon we'll be getting into things like the, the inertia tensor. So uh, I'm looking forward to the future of this class, and the same goes for the other classes. I was completely wrong on what I thought would be easy, what I thought would be hard, but I mean, it's grad school physics. It's, it's all hard, and then you die. See you tomorrow.